Okay, so I jacked up. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can y'all hear me? No sound. Can y'all hear me? You can't hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Why didn't it play my other one? Dead young. Okay, we gonna try again. Hang on. Mm -mm. Y'all just bear with me just a minute while I'm learning. I know y'all love me, so... The wind is whipping this morning, and I have a field trip today. Burr, it's cold today. It's in the low 30s in here in Alabama, and it it's like one day it's 70 and the next day it's 30. That's just how our weather works in Alabama. So today I had a field trip of about 36 people. And at the last minute, a couple of families ended up getting a stomach bug. So now the field trip is small. There's about, I don't know, 10 to 15 people that are coming. Kayla's going to take Larry uh, out on the town today while I do the field trip since it's small. But I see... Look who's sitting down over here. I see. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh my goodness. Can y'all hear me? Kayla, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> well, I jacked that one up. I don't know what happened. I did it just like my other ones. That is my video from yesterday. So if you are on, uh, most people on YouTube see it, but if you're on Facebook and you haven't seen the video, you should scroll over to YouTube and watch the video. It's a really, it's a, it's an opportunity to, for you to, um, see what Kayla and I do, um, during a field trip and how, um, what ends up happening is when there's field trips, normally Kayla and I are, are cleaning, right? Because it's a full-time job just cleaning this place. And so when a field trip comes, we're like, oh my gosh, the coops are a wreck. We don't have time to clean the coops. Oh my gosh, the waters are terrible. What are we going to do? And it's like, the next thing we know, when the field trip leaves, it's 1.30 and Kayla has to go pick up her daughter. And it's like, we got zero accomplished today. And it reminded me of Shane. You know, Monday, I talked to you about, about Shane said, I accomplished, like, he spent the whole day with me on Monday, and he goes, I absolutely accomplished nothing today. And I'm like, wait a minute, Joker, you were with me all day. That's nothing. And it reminded me of Kayla and I going, we accomplished literally nothing today because we're used to being robots to cleaning coops and cleaning out nesting boxes and cleaning waters and all the stuff that we do. But when there's a field trip, we can't accomplish any of that because we're too busy doing a field trip. <laughs> so it was a little bit of a reminder of what Shane said to me Monday. Um, first of all, uh, Ali Alyssa, I'm so sorry about the loss of your dog. Um, I know personally what it feels like a couple of years ago, I think it was three years ago, I, I had rescued a Winnie dog named Rusty. And Rusty and I were BFF. Like he slept with me in my arms every single night. And I, when he, he ended up having congestive heart failure, he had a heart murmur and was on medication. And he literally died in my arms and then came back to life. It was terrible. Got to the point where he couldn't go sleep with me anymore because he used the bathroom all over himself and I had to put him to sleep and I remember the pain and a lot of people that don't don't have animals they don't understand the loss of a pet but I do and I know how difficult that is and I love you and I hope you do well just remember that um unfortunately when you get animals you know it, it even happens with human beings, right? Death is hard. Death is hard to deal with. And it's it's terrible. And 
your animals are your babies are they are mine and i know you're, they're yours Alyssa. and it's so difficult um so i will be thinking about you okay y'all let's get ready i don't know who follows who or what i know that y'all follow other farms i don't know if you follow other youtubers or people on facebook but um lester old lester you know he is kind of like how do i put lester lester is a farm that has the most followers like i'm a survivor has let's see i don't even know to be exact he um let's see he has 1.7 million followers on i'm a survivor on facebook um, and then he, so Facebook was his baby and then he kind of branched to YouTube and YouTube is growing. Um, he didn't have a million followers on YouTube, but he's growing really rapid. He got a, just got a, the reward for a hundred thousand people on L Longhorn Lester, but he's has, he has multiple pages and he's got his whole family on YouTube and he is, um, kind of like what he's, how do I put him? He is a platform for farms. So like a lot of farms follow him because his story is unique. And I'm going to tell you, I had not, I knew his story because Jason and Brooke had told me his story, but I never had actually seen his video of that pig when the, the hurricane came and the pig was swimming to him. I saw he posted the video the other day. I was bawling like a baby. I was literally bawling because I was thinking in my head, I can't imagine what he was going through knowing that his whole property flooded and there was nothing that he could do about his animals. And I thought in my head, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what it was like if Freddie was swimming to me. I would ball my eyes out. So, yes, Cindy, Lester is doing a water challenge. And he made me laugh because in his video, he showed the funk of his water container because it had green and stuff in it. And like for you guys that follow us, you're like, oh, my gosh, they are so disgusting. They don't clean their water containers. Ugh. Like if we show a video and there's a little bit of green in our water, like, followers freak out and think that we're nasty and it's funny because I can't wait for Kayla to come on here and talk one day because Kayla was one of those people oh my gosh the, the animals are walking in mud oh my gosh the water containers are disgusting I am not following them because they're like like that's what people that do not have farms envision that we are nasty butts and do not take care of our animals if there's green in our containers. But what people don't understand that doesn't have a farm, if you do not do it every single time, if you do not clean out your water containers every single time, the next thing you know, if you're videoing, like Kayla can come out here and scrub every one of the chicken containers and she scrubs them every single time. We both do. We scrub them every time we refill them. Okay. <laughs> and within two days, chickens scratch, right? So they scratch dirt or pine straw or whatever into their water containers. And it's as if Kayla and I are nasty butts and never clean the water containers. And so, like, people envision that when they see videos because. It is hard to keep up with. And if you have two or three field trips back to back, because I'm open to the public, some of these farms can clean them every day. But when you're open to the public and you have field trips back to back, we may go a couple of days because the water may stay in the containers in the barn, let's just say a couple of days. And then you go in there and you're like, why is there green already in this? Like we are, it's just hard to keep up with. So, Saying that, um, when I saw Lester's video of, and he had green, he was like, look at this green bacteria that's in my, was it his ostrich 
container. I thought, oh, Lord, people probably think Lester's a nasty butt and never cleans his water containers when he probably cleaned it two days ago with Clorox. <laughs> so be gentle to him if you if you think that. So anyway, if you don't follow Lester, Lester did this um, water challenge. And I I don't really know his reasoning behind it. I'm just going to assume that he's doing it to support other farms to get, because you know how farms you guys have learned over the past couple of um, weeks, how important commenting is and how important views are because you, you know that just in the past, I'd say week or two weeks, how much crazy money I've made off one video from people chewing me out. So I'm assuming Lester's doing this water challenge. Number one, to challenge people to clean their waters with Clorox and reminding people that if you won't drink out of your animal's container, you shouldn't expect your animals to. And that is the truth. I am just like Lester. I feel the same exact way, which is the reason why Kayla and I have a scrub brush out there and we will, we scrub the algae off the containers every time or the poop or the whatever is in there. Um, I think it's a great way to remind people that if you're, if you won't drink out of it, you shouldn't expect your animals to drink out of it. So I think it's his way of, first of all, reminding farmers it's hard work, but we still need to clean our containers. Don't let our animals drink out of filth, you know? So I think that's one of his goals. And I think the second, and I've not talked to Lester to know his goals behind this, I'm guessing. But the second goal I think is his way <laughs> is his way of supporting other farms. Because when you hashtag the water challenge, Everybody can go to the hashtag and see farms all over the world doing the uh, test where what he's asking is for us to go drink out of our water containers. So it's reminding us to go to do it. And so when you hashtag, it's going to knock everybody's views up because everyone's going to hashtag and see farms all over cleaning out their water containers, drinking out of their pig's water containers or cows or chickens or whatever. So I think it's his way of supporting other farms because it will help run up views and it will help introduce maybe people that doesn't follow me that follow Lester may put the hashtag in there. And then the next thing you know, they're like, who is this? Who is this Sneeze farmhouse girl? So I think it's Lester's way of supporting other farms and also reminding farms that you shouldn't let your animals drink out of a container that you're not going to drink out of yourself. And I, I, I think it's cool that he's doing that. So me and Kayla are all about a challenge, right? Yeah. We're all about a challenge. So I need your input about this challenge because you know, Aunt Judy is just not going to walk out there and drink out of a water container. I am an entertainer, okay? I don't do things simple. That's just who I am. I think it's from, I believe it's from me being a dancer my whole life and being on stage and performing. I, per, I have performed my entire life. And so I don't do I'm just not walking out there and throwing some Clorox in the pig container and then drinking out of it. I'm not doing that. Like, I'm going to have to put on a whole production. That's just who I am, right? I bring entertainment <laughs> to you. So, um, I was thinking in my head, Mary, that was one thing I was thinking about. So, today I have a field trip. <clears throat> And I had this brilliant idea. This, and I don't know that I can get these kids to do this. But this is what I was thinking. Okay? Because I don't think Lester's going to watch my videos. So I don't have to worry about him, like, 
knowing what I'm fixing to do. It'll just be thrown out there. So I don't worry about that. But what I was thinking is, first of all, you know, kids are all about creators. Like they want to do that for a living. Like when you ask an eight-year-old, let's just say, what he wants to do for a living, they say, I want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> they do, you know, and if you have grandkids or kids, you know what I'm talking about. They're like all about being a YouTuber. So if I told them they're, fi I'm fixing a video and put you on YouTube, they're like begging to be in the video because they feel like they are celebrities when they get in my videos. It's really cute. So what I was thinking was, <laughs> It's, a, it's going to be a learning opportunity for the kids to understand what what it takes for Kayla and I to keep this farm running. Because it doesn't just take doing field trips because field trips, like you have to have money to, to run a farm, right? It's not free to feed animals and do the thing, buy chicken coops and buy chickens and get animals. Like it's not free, so, like, a lot of times kids don't understand. They're like, oh, I want to be a farmer when we when I grow up. And I'm like, come with me for a week so I can explain to you the business behind having a farm. Because everybody says they would, when they come to my farm, they're like, Judy, this must be heaven. This is incredible. As a matter of fact, one of my followers from Indian Indianapolis, <laughs> oh, wait, my my, why is my, okay, my laptop wasn't charging and it's about dead. Okay, it's charging. Um, She came yesterday and she was just like in, wow. She was like, I can't believe this. And we stayed out there for hours, her and her daughter and her grandkids. And it was just, it's just beautiful. And she's like, this is heaven. And it is. I mean, like, if you just come out here and just walk through it, you don't, I mean, you're like, oh, this is nice. But if you get out there and sit on the ground like I do and lay on the pigs and kiss Tater Bug and Hey Mickey and the lip, like, it's a different level of this is absolutely incredible. When you sit on the ground and all the animals are around you fighting for your attention, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. So anyway, what I was thinking was at the field trip this morning, first of all, I had this brilliant idea, but then I remembered, oh, dang, they're preschoolers. I don't know if I can get them to do this, <laughs> but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So I'm going to tell them that, um, that I'm a YouTuber. Preschoolers probably don't care. They probably don't even understand what a YouTuber is. I don't know. I got to figure out how to get them to do this because preschoolers are not as a daredevil as maybe like a six-year-old, you know? I guess preschoolers are four and five. So anyway, I was going to tell them about the challenge and then we were going to go feed the animals and go love on the animals. And then at the end, right before lunch, Kayla, I, we're going to go clean. First of all, we're going to have to go talk to F Freddie and Shishi and boyfriend to make sure they're okay with me getting my mouth all up in their water container. I mean, they may tell me no. You know, they're probably like, Mom, you're not putting your spit in my water container. You know what I mean? I'm not putting yours and Kayla's spit all... You're welcome to drink out of it, but you're going to have to empty it and Clorox it again before you get your nasty spit all up in my c container. So I'm going to check with the pigs first to make sure they're on board with me doing this. But anyway, so I was thinking that we were going to clean the water container so Kayla and I can show the kids what we have to do to take care of the farm. Okay, so then... After we do it, I was going to get a straw and Kayla and I drink out of the pig container. But then I was thinking about sticking some apples in it and seeing if I can get the kids to bob for apples. You think they'd do it? <laughs> I have a whole thing of apples. And I'm like, but then I was thinking it was a brilliant idea. But then I started like 
thinking, this is a four and five year old. Can they bob for an apple? Is their mouth big enough to bob for an apple? But I thought it would be funny if they tried. You know what I'm saying? And because the pig container is round, almost like a bucket, like you would go bob for apples. And I'm thinking in my head, this is a perfect example of how clean my pig water container is that I would let four-year-olds go bob for apples out of the pig container. But I don't know if I can get the kids to do it. I'm going to have to find, I'm going to have to be assessing those children to figure out who is the one with hyperactivity that is, that would go the extra mile and go, hey, will you duck your head in, will you dunk your head into this water container? If I, if I grab an apple, will you do it with me? If we get soaking wet, I'll give you a towel. I'll give you a free drink. I'll give you a free drink and a free book if you will bob apples with me. I will have to bribe. <laughs> and you can be on my YouTube channel. Like, I will have to bribe him, you know? But I'm thinking, I don't know if I can get him to do it. But, you know, I'm thinking in my head, Carol, the parents are going to be here. This is a preschool. It's not like they're coming on a bus. Like, every kid has a parent. You know what I mean? Like every single kid has a parent. So I'm thinking, you know, there's going to be some kid, some parents, you know, even like going to the creek. There's some parents that are like, no, you're not getting in the creek today. Mm -mm, you're not getting in the creek. And the kids have to sit there and watch the other kids get in the creek and have a ball. And I'm like, come on, mom, let them in the creek. But some parents just... I don't know if it's because they don't want them to get wet. I don't know if, I don't know if it's because a creek is nasty. I'm not really sure, but some schools and some parents will not let their kids even stick their big toe in the creek. And then there's some parents who are like, go for it. Have a ball, get soaking wet. You know, I'll clean it up. And those parents, I'm just like, Thank you. Let kids be kids. But I have to respect the parents that don't want their kids to do that. So I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking in my head, it's not like their whole, the only thing that's going to get wet is their head. You know what I mean? It's not like their clothes and everything are going to get wet. But this may go totally south and I might have to go to plan B on something else. But I was just thinking how much fun it would be to go me educate the kids on how these water containers have to get clean. And you know, those when I drink, Kayla and I get a straw and start drinking out of the pit containers, those kids are going to be like, Ugh! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But I might have to show them Lester's video so that they comprehend and understand like what we're trying to accomplish. But I don't know if there's if they're old enough to like really understand. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I we'll see how this goes today. Uh Kayla, it, it's gonna be it's gonna have to be a bribe thing. It's gonna have to be that I will give you a free drink, a free pass to come back, and a book. And, uh, you know, it's going to have to be a, a total broth. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, me too, Alyssa. I'll, my kids can get dirty. But see, I don't have this fancy car. Like, when my kids were young, I didn't have this expensive car that I worried about. You know, when you become a parent, you're going to have puke diarrhea and everything in your car right like usually like someone's gonna vomit you know so like you just kind of like as a parent you're just like there's being vomit in my car 45 like my youngest son used to vomit all the time like projectile vomit so like my car was always disgusting <laughs> you know mcdonald's french fries in the floor and 
you know, it cracks me up when someone that has children goes, I'm sorry, my car's a wreck. I'm like, really? No, I had three boys. I like, no, I get you. Like I'm used to pee in the floor, you know, pee all over the seat. I had boys, not girls, boys, you know, bringing frogs in the house and snakes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Doesn't bother me. So if you have a better idea for this challenge, I welcome your ideas. If you have an idea on how to get these kids to, um, Diane, my watch is um, charging. So if you'll remind me to put it on at the end, because I will forget. So anyway, if you have an idea on how I can get these kids to drink out of the water container, <laughs> let me know. And I'm thinking I shouldn't tell them. Part of me goes, I shouldn't tell them in the beginning because they might be freaked out. Maybe I should tell them during this. Or maybe me and Caleb bob for apples and they watch and laugh. I don't know. It just, it, you, I can't wait for this video to come together and show y'all the outcome of what happened. So, when... You see, let's say, what can I name this video? Help me name the video. Bob for Apples. Uh, Lester's Challenge. I, I, I don't know. But know that the video, I'm going to do my best. You know, it's my schedule's tight. I'm going to do my best to video and edit tonight so that the video comes out tomorrow but keep in mind i have a field trip today my dad's nurse comes today i didn't go get paint yesterday because my life was crazy yesterday and i never got out to go get paint for my bedroom the painter will be here tomorrow and i am trying to not edit at night because shane and i've been talking and He's like, you are always editing the video. I'm like, it's my job. And he's like, put the phone down. I'm like, Shane, you're going to have to buckle in your seatbelt because I'm going places with you or without you. <laughs> so, so I'm trying not to edit at night. I'm trying to edit during the day so that I can spend more quality time with my husband and create balance because it seems like when I edit at night, I told you guys to edit a video is not a quick thing. It can take hours. So I'm trying to balance. And, you know, my New Year's resolution is to be a better wife. And if I'm up here editing videos for hours when he comes home from work, mm, it's not very good, right? So, luckily with Kayla here, sometimes I go, hey, I got to go in and edit my video. And she's like, I got this. And I'm like, okay, I don't want you to think I'm just sitting inside doing nothing. I got to edit this video before Shane gets home. So, <laughs> it's hard to balance all this. All right. I want to tell you what I want to kind of preach about today. <clears throat> Oh, I need to say this real quick before I forget. Every one of you that are regulars, I need you to text me your spouse's phone number or your sister or your mom or your, your cousin, someone that knows you. Because I, I need you to understand that when you don't show up, we start getting scared something's happened to you. Okay? Like, in... That's how much we love you. Like, Karen hadn't been on here, right? And y'all were freaking out. And Kayla and I are all, where's Karen? She hasn't been on here in a couple of days. Oh, my gosh. She cannot go on vacation without telling us. We start thinking she's in the hospital with the ventilator on. Like, we go to La La Land when you don't show up. So, this morning, I have Karen's phone number. And I text, let's see if she texts back. I'm like, dude, you can't just not show up and tell us that you're not going to be here. So if you have a doctor's appointment or 
if you are going on vacation or you are going to sleep in, please let us know. Just, I don't know how you're going to let us know, but I, like Carol, if something happened to you, Carol, I need to know your sister's number. Because if you don't show up, I start getting worried. And if I text you or message you and you don't message me back, I'm in outer space thinking something happened to you. Okay? So we need backup numbers. Okay? We, we don't do well with this. We care about y'all. And, and most of you show up every time. But, like, when Becky didn't show up for a couple of days, y'all were all freaking out. And I was like, Okay, let me text Becky. But see, then I start work. You know how y'all worry about, oh, I don't want to text Judy. She's busy. You know, I do the same thing with you. I'm like, oh, I don't want Becky to think I'm all in her business and I'm checking on her. Like, so I'm scared to text you because I don't want you to think I'm some freak. <laughs> that's You know what I mean? So just understand that your fears are the same as Kayla and I because when you don't show up... We feel like we should call 911 and go get a wellness check on you. But see, we don't even know your address. You know what I'm saying? So if you go on vacation or you're having surgery or you have a doctor's appointment and you're not showing up, I need you to let us know because you're missed. You see how you see how Karen is missed today? Everybody's freaking out because Karen didn't show up because she left without telling us. You know, Becky had, um, she's been having eye problems and she had eye surgery. She had cataracts on her eyes. We were all flipping out when Becky wasn't here for a couple of days. We were like, we were like oh my God, does anybody have Becky's number? Let's call and check on her. That is what I call it call some backup dancers when you notice someone didn't show up y'all love each other so much that y'all notice when people don't show up and i think that is beautiful that's exactly the type of page that i dreamt of i didn't dream of people fighting or arguing I dreamed of backup dancers. A backup dancer is a, like a backup person for the lead dancer or the lead singer, right? Like that's what I cre I wanted to create is a team that is there for you, not just there for me. Like this ain't all about me. This is about us. I can't do any of this alone. Sometimes I think I put on too much bass when I start doing this with a brush. Anyway, okay. I do you know how as an elderly person it says in the Bible somewhere about how you're supposed to look up to like elderly, like you know, like people that are in a different generation from you, like like I should go to people that are older older than me for advice. I shouldn't go to the younger population or even people that are my age because they probably haven't been through what someone that's 65 has been through. So I want to speak to the younger generation um, today. Um, the younger generation to talk about breakups when you think your life is over because your boyfriend broke up, like you're in high school or even in your 20s or 30s, even 40s, people that are younger than me. I call you young folks. Even when you're in your 40s, you're a young folk to me. I'm 53, okay? I've been there, done that in my younger years. So I want to be the voice of been there, done that. Okay. And I also want you to comment if you had a breakup and you were devastated, like you thought your life was over, you couldn't live without this person, even if it was a marriage and you were married for 20 years and you're old, you're at 50 or older. I want you 
I want you to comment as I begin to talk about this, okay? I want you to be uh, a voice to those kids. I say kids, even they're in their 40s. To the younger people, I want you to give them some advice. I want, if you have a teenager or a younger person than 50 that is in a breakup, divorce, breakup, whatever, that is devastated and think their life is over, I want you to share this video to them because I want them to hear what I have to say. And I want you as backup dancers to talk to them. And even if it's not a breakup, it's a death. Like you lost your spouse and you thought your life was over. I want you to comment to these people because I feel like these people need us. Okay. So when I was in high school, uh, no, I wasn't in high school. <clears throat> I was in eighth grade. And I'd never had a boyfriend. Not really. I mean, there was people that I liked, but I never really had a serious boyfriend. Eighth grade, I can remember I was at the ballpark. Okay. I was at the ballpark. And uh, and I was thinking about the seven minutes in heaven. If you've watched my other video, the seven minutes in heaven came from the ballpark. So if your kids are at the ballpark, they may be playing seven minutes in heaven, okay? And if you don't know what that is, you might want to Google it. Okay, because I was at the ballpark. Because I remembered when I was thinking about this story, I remember someone going in seven minutes of heaven when I met this guy. <laughs> so anyway, I was at the ballpark. My um, brother was playing baseball. And me and the other cheerleaders... I guess I wasn't a cheerleader. I guess I was playing softball because it was that time of year. We were, I don't know, playing cup. We used to play cup ball. Did y'all ever play cup ball? You just took a cup and you made it into a ball and you played baseball with it. Well, we were playing cup ball. And these two guys or whatever were playing cup ball with us. And I didn't know them really. And I remember his name was Scotty. And... To make a long story short, by the way, if you went to seven minutes in heaven, it meant that you went to the football field and made out with your boyfriend, okay, for seven minutes. <laughs> That's what it means. Um, we, when at the ballpark, the kids, if you went to the football field, you're like, oh, they went to the football field. Oh, my gosh. You know, it was like that. So, anyway... I met this guy named Scotty and we started dating. Okay. I am a child of a divorce and it was a terrible divorce. It was fighting. It was, um, my mom didn't work. So we, my mom stayed home with us and it went from mom staying home with us that mom had to work and we were thrown in daycare. We didn't know where's dad, you know, like, like really confusing as a kid. Where's that? Why is it dad spending the night with us? Like, it was confusing. So what happens with kids, and you need to make sure that you understand this if you are a young person, kids in a divorce, especially a girl, cling to other men. And I started dating this Scotty guy and I fell in love. I was in eighth grade. I fell in love. This was my future. This was my husband. I think that the loss of my dad, I think that I clinged to this person personally. And we dated from eighth grade to our sophomore year in high school. So no one else in the school had ever dated that long. And keep in mind, I was the cheerleader. My mom was the sponsor. Scotty was the quarterback of the football team. We were the perfect couple. Everyone knew Judy and Scotty. Everyone knew us. I mean, we were the cutest thing since sliced bread, okay? And um, I 
Now, I can't believe I'm going to say this to you, but I am because if you're a young person, I want you to listen to me. I was 14 years old when I lost my virginity because this was my husband. I let this guy talk me into doing that because, you know, a raging teenager, that's all kind of what on a, is on a boy's mind where a girl's not really like that, but a girl is attached to feelings. This is my husband. This is like, I trust him. This is what he wants to do. And if I don't do it, I'm going to, he's going to break up with me. And then I'm going to be, you know, all that. And so I lost my virginity at 14 years old. And the day that I lost my virginity, I literally went home and went, mom, I just had sex. And she's like, <laughs> I literally went home and told her because I thought, oh my God, I'm pregnant. Uh, that next day, mom took me to the doctor to put me on birth control. Okay. So if you're a young person and you're in my shoes and you're boyfriend is you're thinking this is your future this is your husband like this is what he wants to do um just know that when you do that your feelings are going to get even stronger okay you're going to be so attached to him and you're going to find yourself being super jealous of other girls because you're afraid he's going to leave you your um become sort of obsessed with him because this is your everything. Like you gave him a piece of you. We get as girls, we get really emotionally involved. The boy does not. Okay. Girls and boys, they're totally different. So at this point in my life, this is my everything. This is who I am going to marry. This is, this is, the love of my life. Well, as time went on, you know, I'm in high school. Um, first of all, when my brother, my oldest brother found out that I lost my virginity, he went and was ready to beat up Scotty. He wanted to go to the football field, but it wasn't for seven minutes in heaven. It was to beat the snot out of this boy. My brother could not stand him because he overheard me telling my mother what I had done. I was scared to death. And um, so then as time went on, it was our sophomore year in high school. Scotty broke up with me. And my life was over. I cried every single day. I never, that's where my depression started. That's where I start because when you have to get up and go to school the next day and you're literally seeing Scotty and your heart is breaking because he's talking to other girls or whatever, you're dying inside because you're 15 years old and you're not mature enough to understand what's going on because all you can think about is this was my everything. This was my love of my life. This was like, I was going to marry him. Wait a minute. I, I laid down with him. Like what, why is he leaving me? And that's where the depression started. That's where my eating disorder started because at that point, when your boyfriend leaves you or your husband leaves you or whatever, you go into starvation mode because you're like, I've got to look better than her. I'm going to show him I weigh 200 pounds. Watch this. I'm going to be a rock star. You go into this women. Tell her, tell these younger people we do this. We go into, oh my gosh, you know, she's, she's younger than me. Oh my gosh. You know, I've got to look my best part. We as women go into freak out mode when someone leaves us that is our everything. We are so depressed. 
that we're like, I'm not eating. I, he's leaving me because I'm fat. He's leaving me because I, whatever he told you, the reason he's leaving you, you go into overboard to try to accommodate him because you're doing everything in your power to try to get him back. Okay. At the age of 14, 15, 16, however old I was, I don't have the maturity to understand that he did me a favor. All I'm in is survival mode, right? I'm just like, I, you know, I can't breathe. I just, I'm not eating no more. I'm just, and then it got to be, I was a Valorette, okay? A Valorette is, I was on the high stepper team. We didn't twirl batons. We danced. I was the kick line. Okay. Uh, Scotty starts dating one of the Valorettes. Yeah. And he begins to date her steady. And he gives her his class ring and his letterman jacket that was mine. Okay. And every day during school, I watch, I have to watch Scotty walk her to class, her in that big old fat ring on her finger and the letterman jacket. And I felt like I could not breathe. I cried every single day at school and no one paid attention to me. They thought, I, my, even my parents didn't really pay attention. They just thought she needs to get over this. Like, she totally needs to get over this, okay? And as time went on, no one paid attention to me. As a matter of fact, they began to make fun of me, especially my oldest brother. My oldest brother that wanted to take Scotty to the football field to beat the crap out of him is best friends with him to this day. To this day, my brother is best friends with Scotty. Okay. Where my parents were like, she just, she'll get over it. She'll get over it. Didn't realize that I was consumed because I think when you're that young and you give up your virginity to a guy and you think this is going to be your husband, I, I really think what I did was replace my dad with Scotty because it was very painful as a child when my dad left. My dad was an alcoholic. My dad was in and out of rehab. Um, so there was a lot of pain involved with my father. And I think that I just replaced my father with Scotty because I didn't know like when, as a child, when your dad is in rehab and you don't really, or your dad's an alcoholic. And when you go to his house on the weekends, he's in the bed with, like, it was terrible as a child. My dad did do better. But when I, before my dad got remarried, it was a train wreck. My stepmother, I feel like saved my dad, but, um, it was a train wreck as a child. So I think that I just replaced this, the hurt and the pain that I was feeling with from my father. Scotty made me feel safe. I felt loved. I felt pretty. I, you know, like all the people at the ballpark, I can remember girls come up, coming up to me and going, I just wish that I was in a relationship like you. You and Scotty are so cute together. Football cheerleader, dance line. Oh, y'all are so cute. Hang on. Um, so as time went on, I couldn't get over it. Like I am a, I am, that happened when I was a sophomore in high school. Well, now I'm a senior and the pain of Scotty is still there. I really never had a boyfriend again. I didn't, I was really popular in high school. I did not go to anything. I did not go to a prom. I've told you this before. I didn't go to anything and 
all I was doing was eating to cure my, my, I guess my pain inside food with food became a comfort to me. And I told you guys one time about my senior year in high school, I had to go to competition. The Valorettes were in a competition in Tuscaloosa. And I went to go to, and here I am, I was head Valorette my senior year. I go to competition and I cannot fit in my uniform the day of competition. Tell me that ain't straight up embarrassing to be a senior in high school and everybody's got their uniform on and yours doesn't fit. Yeah. That was fun. I was fueling my body because when you have so much pain from a boy or a husband or whatever, when your husband leaves you and your boyfriend leaves you, the pain you're going, if you don't fix the pain, you're going to go to something that makes you feel good. And mine was eating. I just, it, it comforted me. Like, it just gave me comfort. But in the meantime, the comfort that I was feeling in the moment became a disaster because now only I, I already have this hurt from this guy. And now I have this hurt and pain because I've gained so much weight and people are noticing it. And it's just then my senior year, I tried to kill myself. I overdosed on a bottle of extra strength Tylenol that was like this big from Sam's. I took every single peel, left my mom a suicide note because my mom was at work and it was in the middle of the night. And I had come home from seeing Scotty with Jeannie and I came home and I was going to end it. I'm fat. I don't have any boyfriends. Like I'm ending it because my life is over. Scotty doesn't want me. I'm, I am worthless. I am like, I am no good in this world. My mom doesn't care. My dad doesn't care. My brothers make fun of me. I just want to die. And so I wrote mom a suicide note and told her that um, I was in so much pain from Scotty and I was fat and I was ending my life. Well, my mom got home from work at three o'clock in the morning. And I do remember after I overdosed, I remember getting up and going to the bathroom and vomiting. I do remember that. And then I just went back to sleep. Well, when my mom got home from work, um, she called my pediatrician. Like she read the suicide note. She didn't come check on me. She read the suicide note and called my ped pediatrician at three o'clock in the morning on call. And the pediatrician said, have you checked on Judy? And she said, no. And he goes, go check on Judy. Well, I remember sort of my mom coming in the bedroom and going, what have you done? Because I was like, Ugh. you know, from you wouldn't think that Tylenol would do that. But when you've taken like 550 Tylenol, you're kind of, you know. And I remember all I did was point because I had hid the Tylenol bottle behind a stuffed animal. And I remember pointing to the Tylenol bottle and mom called an ambulance. Next thing I know, I'm in ICU with tubes down my throat. And I can remember everybody in high school was at the ICU and they were coming in one at a time to see me. And I'm laying there with tubes down my throat going, I am so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. And I can remember when I can remember telling the the intensive care nurse, I'm like, please take this tube out of my nose. I get I kept choking. And they were like, we have to put this charcoal down you to absorb the Tylenol because you have liver damage. And I can remember um, going, if you will take this tube out of my throat, I will drink. The, the, the charcoal. And the doctor came in and goes, Judy, if you don't drink this, we're putting the tube back down your throat. I'm like, I will drink it. Just get this out of me. And by golly, I drank it. And then I spent my senior year at Montclair Hospital 
in rehab. And I can remember my parents coming in to go, what is wrong with you? Like you're popular, like you've got everything going. What is wrong with you? And all I could say is, I can't get over Scotty. I can't. Like it hurts so bad. See, to this day, I'll start tearing up about it. It hurts so bad. This pain of him breaking up with me, I can't get over it. And they're like, why? Like, it, it ain't like you were married to him. Like, why? Can't, but see, as a young girl, when, you're, you're, when your boyfriend or even spouse leaves you, you're devastated if you have had an intimate connection with them. If you are like me and had an intimate connection with a boy, you think that's going to be your forever person. A man doesn't think like that. A girl thinks like that. A man that has been through trauma of maybe mom and dad divorce, a man that has been through trauma can connect to a girl like that and they can feel the same pain that a girl can feel. But a guy that has not been through trauma, they're flying by the seat of their pants when it comes to a relationship. They're, how many girls can I get? You know, a girl is not generally like that. But a boy, a girl is generally like looking for love. Like going from boy to boy to boy because they're trying to replace daddy being gone. A boy that has been through the trauma, they are just looking for a relationship. They're looking for love. So this can happen with a girl or a boy. I've seen it. So I spent my senior year in the hospital. Yeah, you talking about, I? they let me out of the hospital right before I graduated. And when I went back to school, there were banners all over, because I was the only, I was the only person that ever did that, you know? Everybody was in shock. It's kind of like, you know how you were in shock? What is the funny man that committed suicide? The comedian. The funny man. Like, we were all in shock when he committed suicide because we were like, he was the funniest person. Mrs. Doubtfire. He's the funniest person. And the, uh, Robin Williams, thank you. Um. When, when Robin Williams committed suicide, you have to admit you're in total shock. You're like, he fights depression? Are you serious? Like, what? Like, what? He's the funniest man in the whole world. He was rich. He had everything going for him. And he committed suicide? We were all in shock. But see, you have to understand that not everyone is going to sit on the couch depressed. Not everyone shows their depression. They handle it in different ways. Some people handle depression by being funny. Some people handle the depression by sitting on the couch. And some people like me handle their depression and they begin to self-medicate with food or drugs or whatever because they don't know how to say I'm dying inside. I can't breathe. I realize that I'm 15 years old, but this breakup has devastated me and I can't breathe. I don't know why. Because at 15 years old, you don't understand. You have no idea how to put into play why you can't get over this relationship. You can't. You can't get over it. And so, like, it's hard for you to articulate what is going on in your brain? Because all you can think about is I'm going to do everything possible to get this person back. I'm going to get skinny. I'm going to be funny when he's around. I, because you don't know how to process that in your head because you're too young to understand. And even in my 40s, okay? In my 40s, my husband left me and cheated on me. We had been married. Oh, I put way too much blush on. We had been married for 15 years. And he met a girl at the beach. Yeah, a girl at the beach and left me. I did another Scotty. 
when I tell you I flipped my lid, I starved myself until I was this big around. You could see every bone in my body. I could not breathe. And I told you that his girlfriend called Verizon where I worked every single day until I got fired for looking up their account that they had together. My husband had an account with his mistress. And she called Verizon every single day until I lost my job. So not only am I this big around, but I have lost my job. So how am I going to take care of my kids? And my husband actually moved out. I'm going to tell you that if you are a wife, a young girl that has your husband has walked out or your boyfriend has broke up with you, listen to your Aunt Judy. If you hear nothing else that I have said, listen to me and understand what I'm saying. When your husband walks out on you or your boyfriend in high school breaks up with you, they are doing you a favor. Your life is just beginning. Where I thought my life was over with Scotty, I thought my life was over with my husband, my life was just beginning. So listen to me. How when when you're when you're consumed, you're in high school and you're consumed with your boyfriend. Okay? Listen. The best thing you can do when your boyfriend leaves you, instead of staying in the bed crying, trying to figure out how to get him back, let him go. Let your husband walk. Let your boyfriend walk. They just did you the biggest favor in your life because your life is just beginning. Trust me. If you don't hear anything else that I say, it's hard for you to think that your life is just beginning because you feel like your life is over. But when you are so consumed with my boyfriend just broke up with me, my husband just left me, okay, is the moment you need to go fix you. You need to accomplish Every single thing that you want to accomplish, even if you're 40 years old and you have kids and you didn't have a job and you lost your job because your stupid husband's mistress got you fired. OK, your life is just beginning. Do you hear me? I know it's hard to understand. It is because the breakup in your heart, you think, I want to end my life. I'll never find anybody else like my husband. I'll never, my boyfriend was everything. He was the head of the football player. Like he's walking this girl to class and she's wearing his letterman jacket. And you feel like you're dying inside. That man or that girl, I'm saying, I, I, I don't mean to sound, I guess I, I'm talking about girls because I'm a girl. They're doing you a favor. If you're a man and the girl left you, they are doing you a favor. Get them out of the way because they are keeping you from your goal. You hear me? And it's hard to understand when you're young. It is so hard to understand because all you can think about is trying to get them back. Listen, don't waste your don't waste your time trying to figure out how to get them back. Let them go. Let them walk. Get them out of your life. They did you a favor. I would not be where I am today if I was still married to him. So I used to hate this girl that my husband left me for. I hated her guts. I literally hated her. <laughs> now, I would love for her to stand in front of me because I'm like, I'm so glad you got him and I don't. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Because I would never, 
I would not have been able to quit my job, stay home with Larry because I was the breadwinner. I would have not been able to do that. I would have not, surely would not had a farm because he was not a country boy. He was more of a city-fied guy. Um, I wouldn't be well. And what I realized is those guys were keeping me from being well because I was caught up in a feeling. Remember I talk about feelings? Um, <laughs> these dadgum balloons. Oh, I forgot to put. Y'all, I'm so messed up. I'm running late. I got a field trip today and I'm just preaching and acting like I ain't got nothing else to do but sit here and preach to the younger population. But I feel like what I'm saying is important to someone. I don't know who needs to hear this. Um, if you know your, I don't know, your granddaughter has a breakup. <sighs> Maybe your best friend's husband left her. Girl, listen to your Aunt Judy. Now is your time to shine. Now is your time to put that all behind you and realize that you need healing yourself. Go listen to me. I was not a counseling person when I was in high school and they forced counseling on me. I hated every second of it. I hated it. I hated it. When I started wanting to get well because I was so consumed in my husband leaving me, I had your Aunt Judy had to go to California to rehab. That's how consumed I was in trying to get my husband back. I was a mess. I was a complete mess. A mess. And if I could go back and do things differently, I just wish that I was strong enough to understand that he was doing me a favor but all I kept doing was trying to figure out how to get him back because I thought he was my life. I would, I'm, I was so desperate that I'm like, okay, I'll go, I'll go. Cause he was telling me that the reason he left was because of me. It was everything that I had done wrong. And what I realized is I was actually the stable one in the relationship. I was the breadwinner. I was the one that kept our family together. As a matter of fact, to this day, um, my ex-husband doesn't even talk to his child. And I realized it was me the whole time that kept our family together. It was me that brought the good out in him. He was the best father. When we were married, we did not miss any event. We did not miss, uh, we did not miss anything. Every sport, every, we were there. We were there. And now he's totally missed everything of his child's life. And I realized it was me the whole time that kept us together. And here I am crying and trying to figure out how to get him back. And I'm like, what was I thinking? I'm just telling you that when you get in a breakup, I don't care what age you are, go run after recovery yourself. Don't try to fix him. Don't try to figure out how to get him back. Go fix you. Because if you're sitting here trying to get someone back that left you, you're warped in the head. You know, even to this day, you know, like with Shane and I, I'm a different person. Like, like for example, this whole hunting thing. Hunting season is hard for me. It was in the beginning because I didn't understand. I was like, he doesn't even want to be around me at Christmas. Like, really? But then I realized I'm like, he don't want to be around me. Well, I won't be around him. I'll go do my own thing. And I learned how to take hunting season because I'm not begging him to stay. I mean, this is my husband now. I am not 
begging him to stay home Christmas and us exchange Christmas presents and put them under the tree. I am not wasting my time to beg him to meet my needs. He either meets them or I go meet them myself. And I've learned to do that. You know, I'm a, I'm a gift giver, right? I enjoy giving gifts and, get, and receiving gifts. Shane is not. Girl, I've learned to take care of myself. You want that diamond ring? You better go get it yourself. You better go do it yourself. Learn how to take care of your own needs. Because I ain't begging no man to stay with me. The reason I say that is because I'm 53 years old. Been there, done that, had the award. For someone that's younger, that has not been through a breakup, when your husband leaves you, you feel like your life is over. Or you're in high school and you're like, oh my God, my life is over. My boyfriend just left me. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Your life's just beginning, sugar. Your life's just beginning. Sure is. And I think that if I could go back and you know how as a, a an older person giving advice to someone that's younger than you, what would you tell someone that's in when it comes to relationship, whether you're a man or a woman, what advice would you give to the younger population when it comes to relationships? Tell them right now, because these people are going to be watching this and they need an elderly person's advice. So what advice would you give, say, a girl that just lost her husband to a divorce or maybe you lost your spouse? And listen, when I talk about losing your spouse to death, that's a kind of a whole different ball game, right? But so you can get caught in grief when you lose your spouse to death. I lost my first husband to death. Um... So maybe I have a little bit of experience with it, but not really. Like I really, I can't really say how to live your life without your spouse because I would say hold on to the memories, but I know that your spouse wouldn't want you to sit around and cry all the time and be depressed. He or she would want you to live your life, take care of your kids, do things that you've, go travel, my stepmother, when my dad died, she got with uh, a traveling club and my stepmother travels the world. That's something she enjoys is to travel. So she travels the world with her uh, travel club. And that's how she stays off the couch crying because my dad passed away. She got herself involved in a travel club. She, she has met the best of friends and they travel all over the world. Because she's like, if I sit home, I'm going to sit and grieve. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't grieve because, you. I mean, there's times of grieving. It's like there's times when I go, oh, my gosh, my mother's dead. And she died in 2009. But it feels like it was yesterday. And I have a grieving moment. You know, um, I just say, um. Talk to the younger population and understand that when you give your testimony to a girl that's in high school that's lost her boyfriend, I can remember my grandmother when I went through my divorce, I was devastated. And my grandmother sat me down and she goes, let me share with you a story. My grandfather was an alcoholic. I don't, I never knew him as an alcoholic because he was recovered when I was born. But back in the day, my grandfather used to get drunk and accuse my grandmother of having an affair. My grandmother ain't never having an affair. Mm -mm. Um, and she would talk about how devastated it was because he would threaten to leave her because she had an affair and because he would, he would only do it when he got drunk. That's the only time he would do it. Um, and she shared with me how hard that was. And it meant the world to me that she shared that testimony with me because that was something I didn't know. And then she told me that she was engaged before my grandfather. I've never heard the story. 
because she never talked about it. But she began to tell me that my she was engaged to a sailor and he passed away on a ship. He, I think the ship sunk. He was in war and he never came home. And my grandmother had an engagement ring and she talked about how she thought her life was over when he passed away because that was going to she was marrying him, you know. And when you share your testimony to these younger girls, you would be surprised at what it means to a younger girl. So don't keep quiet about what you've been through. Share with, if you feel like you're strong enough to share with your granddaughter or your daughter-in-law or whatever. Share your story of pain and how you overcome it so that they're, they feel like there's an outlet. All right, guys, it is 8.15. I have a field trip today, and I've got to go dunk for some apples, all right? I hope what I said can help someone. Don't be like your Aunt Judy. Don't grieve for years and then think your life is over and ends your life. Your life is just beginning. They actually did you a favor. And go fix you. Go to counseling. Go to your preacher. Go to your grandmother. Go to someone that you can relate to. Don't hold it inside and sit there and grieve because he's walking someone else to class or somebody else is wearing his letterman jacket. Don't be like me. Okay? I love you. Today you have choices. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. You can go bob for apples. <laughs> or you can call that granddaughter or that daughter-in-law or that sister or whoever needs to hear your testimony and share it. And by sharing your testimony is not sitting it out. It's dancing. I will see you this. Oh, tomorrow morning is our live with Kayla. It's Kayla's birthday tomorrow. So be thinking about what you did in 1989 so we can share with Kayla what, what y'all did. That's when she was born. I was graduating high school. I guess I was in rehab. <laughs> I love y'all. I will see you next time. Bye.